Okay, today is January 22nd. We are beginning our uh, Disney training. Once a month, we're gonna be doing a training specifically on um, Disney. And today we are gonna be doing Pinocchio. So we are starting to um, talk about the lies that we tell ourselves. So common lies. I'm not good at sales. I'm too shy. I've already asked everyone I know. There are too many consultants in my area. People just can't afford the products. I can't cook. So I want you guys to unmute yourself and I want you to tell me some of the lies that you have thought or you think might hold some of your team members or future team members back. If I haven't listed any already. I don't have enough time. Oh, good one. Not enough time. What else? I was going to say that. Just too busy. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Also, the phone is scary. Phone. The phone is scary. That's a good one. Um, I have a lot of uh, people on my team who's, uh, who have lately been mentioning, you know, that um, they just can't uh, seem to get bookings or they can't get bookings or they don't think they're good at this. All right. So no one wants to book. Wants to book or I'm not good at it. I'm not good. Lack of knowledge on the products. Okay. Lack of product knowledge. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Nobody wants to join my team. Wants to join team. Anything else? I'll never succeed at this. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's progress. So, what you tell your brain can actually be reprogrammed. So, if in your brain you've ever thought, I am just not good at school, well, there is a solution. Oh, I'm going to have you guys mute yourselves, um, if you don't mind, and then I'll have, then you unmute yourself during the engagement part. If you're on a phone, you just hit the mute on your phone. Otherwise, you hit mute on um, the uh, Zoom. Um, when you share a solution to one of your customers' problems, then you don't have to be good at sales, okay? If you're passionate about helping people bring a healthy, hearty meal to their family in the easiest way possible with top quality tools, just showing them how to use those tools will sell the products themselves. So really, if you can focus your, um, your thoughts, not about, I'm not good at selling, but okay, what is the problem? Oh, these people um, have two kids in busy sports, so they need meals that they can put together in 20 minutes or more. Like when Susie and I learned about uh, rush hour fajitas, which is 15 minutes in the microwave, I friggin' was telling everybody, I was like, oh my God, you have to do this right for me. I was so excited. Everybody brought back then, it was a deep covered baker. There wasn't even a rock rock. And that was $88. Now we're selling $139 rock rock with the same recipe. So uh, really, when you're, when you're solving people's problems, they will find a way to pay for it, whether they join your team and get it for free, whether they host a show and get it for half price, or whether they can just afford to buy it outright. If you give them a solution, they will be happy and you don't have to worry about sales. It'll come. I'm too shy. Well, when you make it all about you, then that could be the problem and not about them. Your focus needs to shift so that you do not lose sight of why you are there anyway. You are there to help other people, okay? So by learning new recipes and inspiring them to want to cook and to help your hostess to fill a kitchen with free products, you wanna offer a business to a person in the room maybe that has no other way of making payments for something um, these are important things because you're feeling discouraged and overwhelmed because you're focusing in on you and not on how you can help other people. If you remember that it's not about you, then you literally will change your focus. So um, 
uh, it says chair the chicken bruschetta pasta. It's just like the fajita story. Like chicken bruschetta pasta was not a pampered chef recipe, but it's the easiest dump recipe you can make. You take two cans of chicken broth, you dump it into the rock crock or the deep dish covered baker. You take a pound of spaghetti, you break it in half on the counter, you stick it in, it's eight minutes in the microwave, stir it eight minutes in the microwave. You don't even drain it, it absorbs the chicken broth. And then in the manual food processor, you chop up three cups of, um, uh, basil, you drop up a can, a jar of, or a container of the baby cherry tomatoes, a couple cloves of garlic, some olive oil, and you do fresh Parmesan cheese on that. And if you have leftover rotisserie chicken, and you throw it in, because I used to just buy rotisserie chickens every week, because I hated to cook for all of you that know it. Like, I felt like I was like making a gourmet Italian meal. When I learned that recipe, I was floored. And some of the top sellers in Pampered Chef are quiet, shy, reserved people. They are not outgoing like me. So that is a lie that you need to reprogram your brain on. Yes, yeah, Sue, if I can just pop in for yeah. a minute. I have never, ever, ever considered myself to be a salesperson. And I really still don't. And Jen's our number one top seller. So, and Jen is way more reserved and calm tempered and gentle, quiet spirited than me. And look at her. She's the top seller on our team last year. So you don't have to be me and you don't have to be Jen. You just have to be you and find out what your niche is. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that too. And by the way, because I have the whole screen full, I can't see any of you. So um, if you're sending me a message or something, I can't see anything. So I, um, you can just unmute yourself and, and speak. Um, so what's really going on when we're making excuses in our head, all right? Like, okay, I've asked everyone I know. So, all right, let's get the list out. And I mean it, I want you guys, have you ever written down every single person by name that you have asked to either join your team or host a cooking class with you or a virtual Facebook party if you're a virtual consultant? And the reason I say that is numbers really don't lie. So. You are gonna mark down, and I want you to do this. This is gonna be one of your assignments. So grab a piece of paper. If you're not on this call and you don't have paper or a phone that you can write yourself some notes, I want you to write yourself some notes. In the next couple days, I want you to write down the names of the people. If you are saying, I've asked everybody I know, I want you to write down who you've asked. So, and next to it, I want you to mark down, did you text them? Did you call them? Did you email them? And then approximately the date, obviously, if it was a while ago. Because if you texted them once, or if you texted them and called them, I want two dates down there. Because numbers don't lie. And you may think that you've talked to 25 people, when in actually, you probably talked to eight. And if one in eight actually pick up the phone, you're doing awesome. Like, I texted like 35 people, and one person responded to me. It's okay, keep going. And I'm gonna talk more about where do we come up with these people. But remember that sales is a numbers game. And if you want the goal enough, if you wanna be in Disney, if you wanna hang out, oh, I forgot to wear my new Disney shirt. I bought a Disney shirt just for this training, darn it. Um, if you wanna be in Disney with us next year, then you're gonna to have to figure out how to get in front of enough people to get enough bookings, to get enough sales, to get enough people that wanna join your team um, in order to be there. And lots and lots of people do it. They do it in four months, they do it in six months. Some of us take a whole year to get all of what we need, but you can do it. So we all should have started out with what's called the list of 100. In your welcome packet that you got from Pampered Chef with your kit, there is a Succeed With Us brochure or booklet, and it talks about making a list of 100. Um, and if not, it's in that first three videos of welcome to the, or our organization. So if not, I want you to go back and I want you to pull out a yellow line sheet of paper or the, the list of 100, and I can send you that, it's like numbered. And because we all know 100 people in our circle, and it may seem like you don't, but I'm gonna give you some examples on why you really do. Sometimes the real issue is that we're scared. And if that's the case, then just admit it to yourself, like, I'm just scared, and let's help you overcome your fear and move forward. Don't lie to yourself anymore, but let's address what's really going on, okay? So, and the reason I say numbers don't lie, I was sharing with uh, Abby today when I was on, the, on a coaching call with her, is that um, my friend Karen Batty uh, called all of her directors last year after we were in that LEAD program. That is how I met Jen Mitchell and begged her to come onto my team. We had to submit eight shows a month and have two signed recruits 
to our team every single month to stay in this program. So the people who are in the program, all if they weren't already a director, all promoted to a director, um, or almost all of them. It was the numbers were crazy because those were the requirements to stay in the group. When Karen called her team and her directors and she asked them, how many shows do you think you're submitting a month? All of them said eight or more. And when she said actually, and she pulled their numbers, you're submitting 6.2, you're submitting 7.1, you're submitting 4.6. Like they all thought they were submitting over eight shows a month and not one of them on her team were, even her top sellers. So numbers don't lie. And that's why um, if you guys are on any coaching calls with me or if you've watched any of the playbacks, we have this tracker and the tracker is showing us how many shows held how many people were at the show? How many people were interested in the business? How many bookings did you get? And you'll notice nowhere on that tracker do I care about what your show sales are, okay? Those will come when you have enough people at the show, when you have enough recruits, enough bookings and all that. So now we're gonna talk about the Franks List. If you have not heard of the Franks List or you have not been working on the Franks List, get your pen ready, because we're gonna talk about it next. Frank, I will post this slide in the Disney bound training page, not in our regular team page. It's going to be on the training page, okay? Because it's training material. Frank's list, friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, kids, and spouses. So if you have not talked to your best friend, your oldest friend, a friend from high school, a friend from college, somebody new that you've met, a childhood friend, a friend you really see, friends from activities you're involved with, friends from your holiday Christmas list, and that's just the Fs, then you got a lot of people that you still have left to talk to. Relatives, close family members, family members living in another state, family members you hardly see, family members on your Christmas list, ex-family members. So see what I'm saying? Associates, people you work with, people in different departments, your last job, the job before that, your first job you ever really had. If you're not in contact with them, you're gonna go on Facebook and you're gonna stalk somebody and you're not gonna talk about Pampered Chef immediately. You're gonna Facebook them, Facebook friend them, and you're gonna be like, oh my God, Cheryl, I have not seen you in forever. What are you up to? And then I'll give you word choices on how to bridge a conversation from social to business. That is a skill that is teachable. So if you don't think you know enough people, I will teach you how to find them and what to say with them. These are all skills that you can learn if your goal and your dream is big enough, you will stop saying I can't and you'll say, how can I? What do I need to do? What skills do I need to learn in order to achieve this goal? Okay, keeping a list. One of the things that we were taught a while ago at one of my trainings was to keep a list green and growing. And those are 10 new contacts and five old contacts every week. And you want to keep the list growing so it's not stagnant. So you have a sheet of paper and you write 10 new, five old. And did you get any bookings? Did you get any recruit leads? Did you get any orders? Things like that. So what are new contacts? These are people that you're meeting at your show brand new people that you've never met before, just started talking to, people in your virtual parties, people that are outside orders on your um, shows or on your website, but they're also the lady in front of you at the grocery store. Um, I can't see if Christine Osher is actually on this training, but she and I were talking today and she got, um, uh, you know, she goes to restaurants all the time with her husband and she's always talking to the waitresses and um, there's uh, a lot of bookings that she's gotten from her waitresses and now she has a strong recruit lead um, at one of her restaurants. So those are called prospecting or out and about. And you will learn and I will teach you. So if, if any of these skill sets, you're like, yeah, I need to learn that. You're gonna private message me and you're gonna let me know I need a training on prospecting or I need a training on what do I say once I know who I'm gonna reach, those type of things. And I will either do a video or I'll do a Zoom training with you and we'll video it for others. So um, I want you to you know, be honest with yourself. This is all about the lies we tell ourselves. If you have a skill you need to learn, write it down and we will address it. The lie, there are too many consultants in my area. Well, I've been in business 15 years. Have I done a show for everyone on my street? Nope. How about everyone in my neighborhood? Certainly not. How about everyone in my town? Nope. Everyone at your work? Nope. Gotta have your Franks list. Once you have your Franks list, who is your BFF? Who are their friends? So you can Frank a Franks list. That means after you've gone through all of your friends, relatives, neighbors, acquaintances, and coworkers, 
or kids, you're going to frank your best friends list. Who's your best friend's friends? Who's your best friend's relatives? Who's your best friend's neighbors, her kids, their spouses? Do you see? And for those of you who want to do this, I started this up again. Um, I've only had two shows, but I had heard about this training before. I had used it for a little bit, but then I let it go. And so this year, I'm going to track it from January to December all year long. I am offering this to every single hostess, and I am offering a free item, one of these items for free, when three people from their show hold qualifying shows of $400 or more in sales, I will buy them one of these three. Now, the most expensive and what I think is going to be the most hot item is the stainless steel bowls. So the last time I hosted a show, I added those as an item, a free item on one of my shows, so I didn't pay for it, so I have one in the basement. I shared earlier that this is not going to cost you any money because if you get just three shows and they barely only hit $400, you're still coming out at a profit. You're still earning money even after you buy one of these items at half price on a show or as your um, discount as a consultant. Plus, you are now in front of other people and you're booking more shows. The person who came up with this and created this idea, he just did the stainless steel mixing bowls, by the way. His name is Michael Reeves. You'll hear a lot about him. He did this and he has booked three months out. He has so many bookings. He has about 16 bookings a month, sometimes 20, and he has booked three months in advance. People cannot get onto his calendar now until the new catalog. That's how busy this guy is. So if you are having trouble getting bookings from bookings, incentivize your hostess. My first show, three bookings. Second show, three bookings. Now, one of them from my second show is redating, but if they hold it within, I'd say, 60 days or so, I'm going to let it count. People can't afford the products. Oh, if I asked you, now this is when I wanna have you guys unmute yourself in a second. How much would you spend for a specialty cake for like an anniversary or you know your daughter's 21st birthday or something that um, you think is a special one? So I want everybody to unmute right now. Uh, and I'm gonna stop screen sharing for a second so I can see you because I wanna hear your answer. All right, Jen Mitchell, what's the most that you think that you would spend um, Actually, I want, you to, I want you to Facebook message me it. Everybody Facebook message, I don't want you to say it out loud. What's the most that you would spend for a cake? You had to go buy a cake somewhere um, and buy it for a special occasion. Okay, whoops. Do, do, so I'm gonna go to Facebook for a second and get your answers. Okay. Going in. Hold on, Facebook is loading, probably because it's taking so slow because my husband's on YouTube downstairs. All right, great, I got something. So Deb, I got your answer. I got Carrie's answer. I got Carrie's answer. I got Barb's answer. I got Christine Oja's answer. I got Stacy's answer. I've got Jen Mitchell's answer. Um, I have Susie's answer. I have Jen Suprin's answer and Linda's answer. Wendy, are you on? Okay, so your price differences for the cake range from $45 to $100, okay? Now, I want you to text me now and tell me if you were going to go out for dinner, you and your spouse, you and your husband or whatever, what's the most that you would pay for a dinner out? Because we've all gone out to an expensive restaurant, right? I want to hear what the most you've paid for a dinner out with your spouse is. The most we've ever paid? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you go out to this wicked expensive Something restaurant. super special. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, oh my gosh, that was expensive. Okay. Susie's. Okay, yep. Got Stacy's, Deb's, yep. Yep. We're messaging? Yep. Oh. <laughs> I'm typing on the chat, Sue. Is that what you're doing? 
Uh, no, we're private messaging. That's okay. Um, okay, good. Yeah, we're private messaging on Facebook. All right, and Abby's on. Hey, Abby, great. I want to add you on here that you're here on this training. Abby's here. Perfect. Um, okay, so your price range for a dinner out ranges from $75 to $250. So I share that because what we think is expensive may not be what our guests think are expensive. The reason I'm bringing this up because this was one of those really good um, opportunities where um, people would say, oh, Karen's here. Hi, Karen, let me add you to the door prize slip. Didn't see you there. Um, one of the things that um, I think is really important is that when they did this, they asked us, do we think that the double burner grill pan with two panini presses for $250 was too expensive? And I was like, that is way too expensive. Nobody would ever buy that outright. And then we had um, Tanil is her name, speak at national conference. And she was with um, a, a bunch of us and she sells double burner grill pans like they're mixing shops, no joke. She sells one every show. She's like sold more than anybody in the company. And she did research on this stuff and she can sell them really, really well. And it's all in um, as I say, it's all between what's in your head. If you think it's too expensive, then you're not going to offer it. You're not going to assume people can afford it. And you're going to be like, oh, you really should host a show and get this for half price. And the lady's thinking, I'm not hosting a show. They just want to buy it outright. So just food for thought with that. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. But remember that what you think is expensive may not be what other people think is expensive. So it's all having to do with um, your, your specific... Um, budget see what i'm saying um so again uh budget on personal income many uh people purchase a double burner grill pan outright no big deal um there is um the point i want to make at the end of this is that i've been into these two million dollar homes down in massachusetts i mean one of them was ridiculous it was an eight car garage there was boats on the dock and all of that and they couldn't afford anything really i mean the show sales were low and all that because they were um cash poor you know they had a lot of stuff but they had debt out of the wazoo so they really didn't have any cash and then i've been in this tiny little trailer where i've done like a 1700 dollars show and they didn't think anything of dropping 450 dollars on their own personal products after the free after the half price after the discounted products and we get commission on anything over and above the free the half price and the you know uh, and the 60 percent off if they buy at that 20 or 30 dollar um discount you get um, commission on that. So um, don't prejudge. Do not prejudge on whether they can afford it. Just offer it. The I, I can't cook. <laughs> what does that have to do with the price of bread? <laughs> I was like, that doesn't mean anything. Like I'm in the top 100 of the company. I couldn't cook. I really hate to cook. I still hate to cook. Um, but you don't have to cook at your shows. You can do station style. You can have the guests do the cooking. Work to your strengths, people. And stop focusing on your weaknesses. If you can read and you can run a microwave, you can be successful in this business. So if you have things that you dislike, let's have a conversation and let me help you work around them. There are some things that you may dislike that you're just going to have to get over and we're going to have to teach you how to do it and learn to like it. Like sometimes you have to learn to eat your vegetables. Brussels sprouts might not have been so yummy at first, but they're really good for your body or spinach or broccoli or something else. So we always joke when we hear a, a tough message at church, we're like, ooh, there was some Brussels sprouts. So there might be some Brussels sprouts for you guys. So your success is determined by the four inches between your ears. What you think you will become. So you need to start now. It is 2019 and we are all going to reprogram ourselves with positive affirmations. Okay. People never outperform your own self image. Okay. And if you put a small value on yourself, rest assured, the world will not raise that price. So you need to hold yourself up and believe that you are worth and you are able and you are capable of achieving this trip to Disney and that you're gonna show all those naysayers and all those family members that think it's a cute little business 
that this business can be a career and, a, and, a, and something worth uh, owning. Nancy Jo Ryan, who makes $600,000 a year, was at a dinner party with some lawyers and some doctors and some other big wig people. And somebody asked her how her little business was going. When another friend in the audience or in the dinner party heard that, they turned to Nancy Joe and said, doesn't your little business do about $1.7 million a month or $1.3 million a month? And they were like, holy smokes, that's like, that's like corporate America. And she said that was the first time that she realized I am the CEO of my own business. She said, I still felt inferior making that kind of money when I was in a room with doctors and in a room with lawyers and stuff like that. And she has an accounting degree. And she said, I still felt inferior until I realized I own my own business. And you guys need to take ownership of your own business. If you were the boss and you were your own employee, what would you be telling yourself to do? So you need to rewrite the pathways of your brain. So that means we need to guard our self-talk. By the time you're 17 years old, you have heard no, you can't on the average of 150,000 times. And you've only heard yes about 5,000. That's 30 to one. So that makes a very powerful belief of I can't. So if you are then telling your brain, I don't know how to cook, I can't get bookings, nobody likes me, whatever the lies are you're telling yourself, you are self-fulfilling your own prophecy and we need to stop that. So talk to yourself, don't listen to yourself. So we're gonna watch a YouTube video. Um, a long time ago, I watched a video of a man. Um, I could not find this video, I wanted to find it so bad. But he ran across the country, he was like in his 80s. And when he was interviewed, they asked him, how do you keep going? How did you keep going when you felt like you were gonna quit? Because I mean, he was old and it was you know, a record that hadn't been done. And he said, I talk to myself, I don't listen to myself. So when my mind would tell me, I can't go on, I would tell it, well, just make it to the next telephone pole. And then once I got there, I would tell them, let's just make it to the next telephone pole. You can make it surely to the next telephone pole. So he made a point of talking to himself and getting to the next telephone pole. Whoops. All right, let me see if I can get back to that slide because I want to see if I can copy this and go here. Instead of going around down on yourself, feeling unattractive, too tall, too short, not enough of this, too much of that, no dare to get up in the morning and say, I am a masterpiece. When you start your day, you must own your morning. When you wake up in the morning, say thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. That's how I live my life. One of the reasons why I am today. Life doesn't really happen to you. Life really happens for you. My question today is what kind of I am's are coming out of your mouth? I am victorious. I am blessed. I am talented. I am anointed. Some of you, if you would just change the I am, you would go to a new level. I am strong. I am confident. I am equipped. I am more than a conqueror. I am well able. Make sure you have the right I am's coming out of your mouth. Say thank you in advance for what is already yours. True desire in the heart, that itch that you have, whatever it is you want to do, that thing that you want to do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you. Sit beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. And anything you want 
good you can have. Make a list, a dozen or ten of these I ain't. Read over them all through the day. Get them down in your spirit. Meditate on them. They may not all be true right now, but you have to call the things that are not as if they already were. I am prosperous. I am free. I am talented. I am young. I am beautiful. I am attractive. What would be your perfect day? I mean, your ideal day, a day that you went to bed that night and you just thought that was the most incredible day. That's how I want most of my days in my life to be just like that. What would that perfect day be like for you? Don't wait until the end of your life to have that ideal day. Don't wait until next year or next week to have that type of day. We can choose to wake up every single day and live that day in an idealistic way for ourselves in a way in which we show up as who we want to be, in a way in which we are doing things that enliven us and engage us and get us excited, in a way that we're doing things and being with people and creating experiences that feel alive and fulfilling. We can have that type of life. I call it the charge life, and everybody can have it. My encouragement is never say negative things about yourself. Most of us would never go up to another person, at least to their face, and criticize them. Yet we have no problem criticizing ourselves. I am so slow. I am so unattractive. I am so undisciplined. That is cursing your future. Do yourself a favor and zip that up. We have enough in life against us already. Don't be against yourself. So be a person of good positive thinking. Be a person of good positive action. And suddenly one day you'll wake up and you're like, I, mean, I just feel amazing, I feel extraordinary, I feel positive. That's what it feels like to live the charge. You're still here. You get another chance. It's okay. To do better and be better. Another chance to become more of who you were created and what you were created to fulfill. First thing I do, I wake up, is number one, I smile. If you'll stay in faith and go out each day, be your best with a smile on your face, happy where you are, then you are passing the test. I really believe that how you start the day is how you end the day. And when you start the day the right way, in a powerful, empowering way, it's going to totally transform everything that you do and experience throughout your day and throughout your life. And at the same time, if you start off the day the wrong way, you start off the day like most people do, which is pissed off and angry and stressed out and uh, you know worried and have all these negative emotions that fill their body, as a result, it's going to affect everything they do that day. It's going to affect their experience at their job. It's going to affect the relationships that they have with people in their life. Because when you're in a bad state, you're going to treat people totally differently as opposed to being in a great state. It's also going to affect uh, your experience with your customers. It's going to affect your health, your body. But more importantly than that, it affects your quality of life. When you smile, for me, it represents gratitude. It represents that, oh my God, I'm alive. I celebrate the fact that I'm alive. You know, what a concept to celebrate the fact that you have another day in your life, which is the greatest gift you could ask for. Another day to create whatever it is that you want. Another day to pursue your goals, your dreams. Another day to experience life to the fullest and to experience all the gifts and joys that life has to offer. All right. So let me just go back to screen sharing. What'd you guys think of that video? Did you get the Some of it was going in and out, so oh. I couldn't hear it all. I don't know if it was my end or your end. But... Okay. Um, did you guys, I'll post it on our team page for all of you guys.
um, and then you guys can watch the YouTube video directly um, yourself. But I want you to watch it because yeah. um, it's super important to know that what we feed our mind every day from the moment we wake up to the end of the day is, um, is critical. So let me uh, screen share again. Hold on just a sec. Whoops. When I was listening to it, it kind of reminded me of a, you know, the pep talk I used to give my teenage daughter when something never went right, you know. So, you know, the boy she wanted her to ask out, never asked her out, you know, that kind of thing. You know, so we always just have conversations about having the positive um, talk with yourself, not the negative. Don't listen to the negative talk. Yeah. Yes. There we go. It's like trying to find you guys. <laughs> Sorry. You guys were off in the corner. I couldn't find my thing. Um, I agree. And it's so important that we feed our minds the positive thing. And you will notice a difference when everybody around you does the same thing. So you're going to learn a lot in business about this belief triangle. Some of you guys have been taught it before. And what they say in the belief triangle is that your, um, your beliefs will then lead to actions and that um, you'll, you'll act on your beliefs and then you'll see results. But I'm going to challenge you about that because I heard a speaker at national conference seven years ago. It was my very first conference and it really made me think. And he posted a picture of a skinny picture of himself on the fridge. And he said, you know what? I looked at that picture every day and I thought, I believe I can be skinny, but guess what? I wasn't seeing any results because I was walking to the fridge and I was opening up the fridge and I was eating what I wanted to eat. So he said, belief is not enough. So I hired a personal trainer at the gym and he said to me, I want you to do this exercise and do this many push-ups, whatever it was. He was explaining that the things. And I'd ask the guy, well, why? Well, does that build a certain muscle or does it help me burn more calories? Why? And he said, because I said so. And in no time, his body changed to the way he wanted it to look because actions will actually produce results. And once you have results, it'll start building your belief. And once you have belief, then you'll do more action, which will give you more results, which will give you more belief. So I'm gonna challenge you to turn this belief triangle on its side and start with actions. You can want to be healthy or skinny or successful in this business, but until you take some action different than what you have been doing all these years that you believe it, but nothing was happening, uh, things won't happen. So you can know it, but you are not getting results unless you are doing something. So I give an example of five contacts a day, two shows a week, and one team member a month because the three, two, one, um, uh, is what Pampered Chef teaches. We talk about five contacts a day because now we're doing a lot of virtual shows so the numbers are really, um, you have to talk to more people. If you don't have the skill set to do some of the actions that you need in order to be successful, then here are some things. And this kind of addresses some of, you know, what people were saying, product knowledge and stuff like that. Take a class on prospecting and then ask me for my PowerPoint, because I have a PowerPoint on prospecting. If you don't know how to do shows, take a training class on bookings and practice the word choices or watch one of the videos on shows, virtual or live. Ask to join one of Jen Mitchell's virtual parties. If you live close enough to me, come see one of my live shows. If you don't live close enough to me, Tell me where you live and say, find me somebody to shadow at a show close to me. And I have director friends that live all over the United States. I'm sure I can find you somebody for you to go to a show and see do a show. I really suggest Christine Ozier go see Priel Yen because she is the number one top uh, overall seller of Pampered Chef in all of history. And she lives right near you. Take a class on recruiting or host coaching. So you got to take the classes first, but then you get coaching and training from me. Because I don't need to train you on stuff that Pampered Chef's already done professional training on. But once you've done the training, I can clarify questions, tell you what words I choose and how I do it. Action. Reach out to your upline and ask for help in whatever your weak areas are. And work on personal development so that next month you can take action. So if you can't take action today or this week, then you need to take a class and get some skill set. But once you have some skill set, you should be able to take some action. So maybe this month you only have two 
or three shows booked. But if you take some classes and you work on personal development, by next month in February, you should be up to six shows. So that by March, you'll be up to the eight shows that you want to have, whether they're live or virtual, so that you can be in Disney with us next year. Three things that I changed in my business to make me go from a hobbyist to a career person. And a hobbyist is a consultant that works part-time, working one to two shows a month, and uh, you're meeting that goal. I, for me, I only need a little extra income, so but I decided to take it full-time and I changed three things. First thing, I learned how to use a booking slide. They do still sell a booking slide, but I will train you now that you don't need to buy a booking slide. You just need to turn to the back page of your catalog and talk about the benefits of hosting a show. And I will teach you, teach you how to do that. And you have to do it at every single show, even if there are people in the audience that have been to a lot of Pampered Chef shows. I have many hostesses that have no idea about the benefits that they get for hosting a show. They don't understand the plan on the back. So if you're talking about it at every show, you might spark some interest. I also learned how to talk about the business opportunity at every single show, no matter what. Two guests or 20 guests, chatty group or silent. The reason you do this, and there are lots of different ways that you can talk about the business opportunity, you could do, my newest thing is, is I'm handing out, I have a Ziploc baggie and it's got a Hawaiian lei in it because of Hawaii, but you can put something Disney in it, which I need to do now that it's January. Um, you can put a Lego in there. That is, you can build a business. It's kid friendly and elastic, meaning it's flexible. So I put all these things related to our business. There's a training on our team page about it. And I pass it out to six different people. And I say, okay, tell me what you think this has to do with my business opportunity and they guess and then i tell them if they get it wrong and i'm getting the information out there i used to do an ask me anything there are three four or five different ways that you can talk about the business opportunity at a show that is non-threatening but it gets information out there and gets people thinking about it and then once you've informed them about hosting and about the business opportunity you must ask them inform and invite so inviting is called full service checkout. And if you have not been trained on what full service checkout is, send me a message, we'll do a training on it. I will teach you how to do it, but you need to ask everybody and you need to not prejudge, just like the cake. You don't know who is living in a house. Um, uh, Susie knows Erin Burnap, a friend of ours, a director friend of ours. And she said, when I met her, I was living in a beautiful house in Massachusetts. I had two fancy cars, like, you know, Mercedes or BMWs in the driveway. I had kids in fancy schools and we were two paychecks away from losing it all. My husband lost his job. He couldn't find a new one. And we were freaking out. She's like, we were, you know, land rich and cash poor. She said, I was so thankful somebody offered Pampered Chef to me because the money I made on Pampered Chef was enough to make our mortgage while my husband was looking and we were able to salvage everything and not go bankrupt. You don't know who needs this opportunity. I missed the opportunity of recruiting a lady because she was wearing a Rolex watch and I was afraid to ask her. At the end of the show, I asked the last lady, is there anybody that you know that might be interested in a job? And she said, did you ask Corianne's mom? She just lost her job lesson learned. If you simply take action on the steps required to succeed and make them a habit, the results will follow. Once the results are there, belief will then be instilled. I joke when I met the CEO of Pampered Chef my first year and she said, how did you earn this trip to Spain, France, and Italy so quickly? And I said to her, I plugged in like an uh, 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 out plug into an outlet and I just followed the system you guys set up for me. So that trip was 140,000 points to earn, but you had to have 12 qualified, qualified, meaning they hit their 1250 recruits to earn that trip. And that was six years ago. Now to earn the top level of Hawaii, you just need 150,000 points and you can get there however you want. But I, didn't believe I could be a director because back then you needed six to be a director. I didn't, I didn't think I had what it takes to be a director. I was just selling two shows a month. But I took the steps of what I was told to do, to sell, to book, to recruit. And lo and behold, 
25 recruits joined my team that first year. I actually promoted to a director in three months. If you're new, like Deb and Carrie, that's called fast track to director. If you promote to a director, five new team members on your team and 2,000 in team sales, you actually get up to a $2,000 cash bonus. It's crazy. You get $500 when you first promote, uh, $500 when you've been a director for uh, three months or six months, and then you get another thousand dollars when you help somebody on your team promote so there's a two thousand dollar cash bonus out there for newbies i mean if i could do it again i would um but even after i promoted to a director i'll be honest with you guys i still didn't believe i could be a director i didn't even think after i earned the spain france and italy trip that i was going to earn the trip the next year i kept telling my husband that was totally a fluke that was god blessing us don't expect a trip next year i don't think i can earn it like i literally did not have the belief that's why i totally turned that belief triangle on its side i did not believe i could do it but i repeated the steps that i was taught and eventually the belief and the confidence of being a director arrived. So you don't have to believe it yet. It's okay, all right? It's not like you have to believe it's gonna happen now. Just start doing the actions. So my first piece of advice is stop listening to yourself and start talking to yourself. That's why um, uh, Amanda was on doing a little blurb for her other direct selling company today and she said she was talking to herself. I'm like, I talk to myself all the time. <laughs> you got this. So you're offering a great service to your customers and think of the hundreds of dollars and free products that they're going to enjoy when they host a show or join your team. Okay. Think about other people outside of your group. So here's your action steps for this week. I want you to seriously assess what negative talk you've been allowing to run in and out of your mind. And I want you to write 10 positive affirmations. I was asked one time um, at a retreat to, we blindfolded half the room, they had to close their eyes, and the other half of the room, we had to walk around and we had to whisper in everybody's ear that had their eyes closed, one statement that you wished you had heard spoken to you. So people were like, you are beautiful, you are courageous. One of the things that I speak to myself all the time is I was born for greatness. I was born for greatness. God has something great for me to do in this lifetime. So I believe it. I just don't know exactly what he has for me, but I believe it. So you need to know some specific words of affirmations that you're going to be talking to yourself. I'm a quick learner and I improve my skills daily. I'm a top recruiter and seller because I ask everyone to join me. I'm a loving wife and mother, and I look for ways to express my love to my kids. I reach out to five contacts a day, and I am making progress towards my goal of two shows a week. I am offering great customer service by making morning after calls, offering the hostess and a, a second time and three guests. I asked um, on a director page, Tiffany Foreman replied, I'm like, give me some of your affirmations. What do you guys say to yourself? I easily submit eight shows a month. I comfortably am adding two team members a month. I passionately share the business opportunity at every show. I consistently coach my team weekly. I confidently lead an executive team by 2020. I am effortlessly leading a dynamic and exciting team of consultants who regularly and easily add people to our team. I am comfortably adding three consultants or more to my personal team monthly. I am easily promoting to senior director by national conference July 1st of an exploding team. I'm an inspirational and valued leader whose team regularly communicates with me and I am effortlessly booking parties and keeping a full calendar. Okay, so that is the end of my training. You guys can all unmute yourself. Now it's open question and answer and feedback about affirmations is there anybody out there that already does affirmations or has affirmations written down nobody i want to see no. no i do they're just downstairs okay so this little pink book i don't know if you can see this um i was asked to do that at a meeting uh, spur of the moment down in massachusetts write 10 affirmations and i was like Oh my gosh, so this is what I wrote. This was uh, back in 2016. I'm a beloved child of God and I spend time in the word and become more Christ-like. I am a bundle of positive energy oozing out on everyone I meet. 
I am a top recruiter and developing leaders to achieve their goals. I am a sincere friend and grow and inspire those around me to be sincere also. I am in the top 1% of my field and I have developed the skills to train others. I am a highly sought after speaker and motivator and I inspire those around me. I am healthy, physically fit person who will achieve hiking all 48, 4,000 foot mountains in New Hampshire by 2020. Uh, that probably isn't gonna happen unless I get hiking fast. Uh, I am more concerned about others than myself and I enjoy serving. My life is a balance, is well balanced between work and play and I enjoy them both. And I am a problem solver, attacking roadblocks with passion. I am an inspiring recruiter and I have a system in place to support them and my customers are excited to hear from me. So that was spur of the moment two years ago and I have stuck by a lot of those over the last two years. So think about what you want to say to yourself this year and I want you to post it somewhere where you can see it and maybe you need to do three to start with. And maybe you need to put the three um, on a post-it note in your mirror in the bathroom where you brush your teeth. And every time you brush your teeth and every time you go to the bathroom, you read it. Uh, when I did this training before, I told everybody that twice a day, in the morning and at night, you need to out loud, out loud so that you're speaking it and hearing it, which are different parts of your brain, read your affirmations. One of our girls was a postal worker and uh, she now runs a post office, she's a postmaster, but at the time she was just a postal worker and she said she was in the bathroom in the mirror. You are amazing, you are, and she was talking to herself and somebody came into the bathroom and she's like, and now they think I am postal. <laughs> Patty was hysterical. So she was doing it though, she was doing her affirmations twice a day out loud no matter what. And so I really want you guys to seriously consider that. And I want you to at least have three in the next 48 hours, and you gotta send it to me. Send me what your three affirmations are. When I was trying to earn the trip to Spain, France, and Italy, I had a sticky note right above where you grab the refrigerator handle, it was right above it. And it just said, what are you doing today that is going to change your tomorrow? Because you can pretend to be busy, but if you're not taking an action that is going to change your future, next year, you're gonna look back at 2020, 19, when you hit 2020, you're gonna look back at 2019 and you're gonna go, I'm in the same place I was before. And we all know people like that, that wanna change, they want something different, but they don't do anything to change their life and therefore their life never changes. Year after year, they're in the same place. It's miserable, unhappy, wishing, wishing they would win the lottery. Okay, questions, I'll be quiet now. No questions. Anything at all about anything. Guys have marked down the next training. You know where the next training is? We have, four. We have two coming up. So, yes, the fourth spring launch is Monday the 4th, but Tuesdays are normal training. So Monday, we're just going to all jump on Zoom like this. I'll probably have a glass of wine and we're all going to watch online together the fall new products or the spring new products that are coming out. They're gonna show us those online. And then after we watch it all together on Zoom, then we're gonna talk about, oh my God, my favorite product was blah, blah, blah. I'm so excited I earned that for free. And then we're gonna talk about how we're gonna sell it. And then the next night, Jen Mitchell is going to do her training. Okay, first and third Tuesdays of the month. What time, what time is that for, the, you said the Monday the 4th? Yes, I'll have to, uh, let's see, it says save the date on the thing, but it doesn't have a time. I'll have to go to the director page and find the time, and I'll post an event through our page okay. so that you know. Um, I actually, here's a question for you guys. Would it be easier if we did it sun, uh, oh no, Sunday Super Bowl? Nope, nope. Not doing that. <laughs> I was gonna say, why don't we do it Sunday night? Cause I'll be watching Super Bowl. Um, Cause I'll have the video earlier. So I, we can watch it anytime. Um, you know, if you, know, you want to watch it 8.30 to 9.30, we can do that again. But if you want to watch it at eight. So 
Um, I'll post the spring launch time that it's launch, uh, you know, put a little poll and you guys can pick because I'll be able to download it to my computer first and then I can just play it for you guys. Okay, so I get a sneak peek. I'm going to find out what they all, yay. Um, okay, so let's do a drawing. So let me do a random uh, drawing number here. So online here for both trainings this month. So let me get my highlighter first. Linda. So I have a quick question. Yes. I was invited for to get an accountability partner. How do I go about doing that? Awesome. Um, where where did you get invited about that? Was that on a um, a specific call or just things that we were talking about? In my email. Okay. In my email. Who is this talking? I'm sorry, I can't see who it is. Oh, it's Linda. Hi, Linda. Okay. Um, yes. So are you part of a home office um, training? Not that I know of. Okay. So forward that to me, but we will hook you up. Accountability partners are really a great idea. Um, and um, having an accountability partner within our group or without of our group, um, another director or somebody that's at the same level as you that you can like cross pollinate um, is great. So I, if you are interested in an accountability partner, I absolutely will match you up. I am friends with uh, Connie Flora, Christina Kemp, and Lindsay Christopher. Um, and we meet online every Thursday and they're directors as well and they have teams. So we can match you up with somebody on their team um, and that way you guys have somebody else that you're like, all right, we're trying this. I tried that. Have you have different word choices and we'll learn something new from another team. So send me, forward me that email. Um, just so I know. Okay. Um, okay. that would be good. All right. So gotcha. So let me do my random, um, thing. So we have Jen and we have Abby, Linda. All right. All right. Let me do my little random thing. By the way, we are giving away the Citrus Press today. I asked you guys a list of products that you wanted me to raffle. When you are on both trainings in the month, you go in the raffle and you get picked. So today's is five. Linda, you're our winner. You're number five. Woo! Okay, so let me, let me put a star next to you so that I remember to mail you it. And you're going to get the Citrus Press. Citrus Press. So if you guys are on in February on the first and third Tuesdays of the month's training, you'll be in for the next drawing. And I am going to just add more products to my basement and I will raffle something off once a month because I want to reward you guys for investing in your own business. So thank you all for being on. It is 930 and I will talk to you all on our team page. If there are any of these slides that you would like um, me to post into the team page, let me know. I would be happy to do that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night, ladies. Good night. Thank Bye. you. Thanks. Good night. I'll read your message to Mitchell in a sec.